Well, this is either going to be a good video or not. Uh, I don't have the usual vloggy stuff planned. There's just been so, so much going on in my life in the past few weeks, and a lot of really good stuff, uh, but also some big bummer stuff, and it's just a lot. And you know when you get a lot on your plate and you're just like, oh my god, there's so much on my plate, like, <sighs> and you just need to talk it out? Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm talking it out. On a pleasant note, though, I did get my first haircut since, uh, like, the time the pandemic started, and uh, it's nice to have a fade again. I was just buzzing my head for quite a while to save money and because it was hard to find barbers and you know you know how it was you were there um and uh yeah i look good i feel pretty it's nice i feel good um other than that uh two of my best friends just got married which is freaking totally amazing um absolutely beautiful beautiful ceremony had honestly a wonderful wonderful time and it was kind of like I felt a little bit like Ted and Marshall and Lily were getting married, you know? It's just, they're they're that special, and it was so cool to see them tying the knot. I'm honestly, like, so happy for them. And I was the best man. And uh, so, if you've ever been in a wedding party before, you know there's just, there's a lot going on. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Zero complaints. I am so honored and happy to have been a part of all of that. Um, but I'm also glad that it's over, because it was a lot. And uh, now we can just chill and focus on spending time together because Mecca is also, some of you watching this might remember the name Mecca and remember him from the live stream. He's my other best friend. Um, he is back in town from Florida for the week and he's been staying with me, which has been lovely. And yeah, it's honestly just been really amazing to get the whole gang back together. We are getting tattoos, matching tattoos. That was kind of a bachelor party idea that I had. And we're all getting matching wolf pack tattoos. Um, and they're awesome. Mine is tomorrow. I had to wait until the weekend because we had... I guess we didn't have to get Mecca's done first first. Like, I think we did it in the right order. But anyway, I don't, I don't need to go into the logistics about it. The point is I'm getting mine done tomorrow. Um, I'm going third. And I'm super excited. Like, genuinely. I'm a little, little nervous, but really not that much. Like, it's... Pain has never really been a, a, a major off-putting thing to me. Maybe I have a bit of a... Uh, what do you call it? Masochistic side? Is it masochistic? Yeah, sadistic is the other one. Sadistic and masochistic. I've got a little bit of that, so, you know, it's like pain is just kind of like, whatever, like, honestly, I'm a little worried that I'm gonna enjoy it, and <laughs> uh, gonna end up being one of those people that gets addicted to tattoos, and, uh, you know, this time next year, I'll have, like, a full sleeve, and this time, two years from now, I'll have two full sleeves, and many, many thousands of dollars less in my bank account. But if that happens, then I'll be happy because I'll have two full sleeves. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a thing that's going on. So, yeah, just lots of stuff. Um, had a bit of... Blah, I, I don't want to infringe on anybody's privacy, so I'll just say some family drama. Um, a family member is going through some pretty major suffering right now. And that's, uh, you know, it's just... If you've been through that, if you have family and they've, you've known them and they've gone through suffering, you know... That feeling of just like, ah, you wanna, you wanna help, you wanna fix things, but life is often not that simple. You can't just force things to be fixed. Sometimes you have to convince people to get back on the right path themselves. And I actually just before recording this vlog, in an additional effort to try and uh, relieve some of this pent up stress and pressure from life stuff. I wrote him a letter, and I've never written a family member a letter before, but, you know, I've been doing a lot of the writing thing, you know, author's vlog and all of that. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to write him a letter. If nothing else, it'll probably help me feel better, and it did. And I think it said a lot of good stuff, and I want to I wanna go through and refine it and, and clean it up and then handwrite it and send it to him. And I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to do that, but I very well might. And, you know, I've never tried this before. I've tried other things before. But I haven't tried this, so I'm trying it. And uh, so, fingers crossed. Um, be really nice to have everyone that I love just doing awesome. You know what I mean? It's like, in a weird way, I kind of wish that everyone was doing better than me. You know? It's like, and that's weird because I almost, it's hard to say because I'm so competitive. I want to be doing just a little bit better than everybody. But it's like, I don't want to be doing way better than certain people, you know? It's like, I want them to, like, be getting it, you know? 
Book stuff. Yes, uh, we are still writing the book, of course. This week, I have maintained my law of writing every day. I have, just because there's been so much stuff going on this week, I have slipped out of the hour a day minimum for most of the days, but I've still completed most of a chapter. I should be completing that chapter tonight. Um, so we are getting close. I'd say we're at about 75%. And since last we talked, uh, that was that short little video where I talked about, oh my gosh, the book is so much longer than I think it is. But since last we talked, I think the book actually got a little bit shorter. And it was probably in part due to that realization of realizing like, okay, maybe I need to, you know, cut to the chase and get to the point. And I think I might have overcorrected a little bit. So I might be going back at some point and maybe adding in one or two chapters um, in the past just to, just to lengthen out some parts just a little bit because I feel like I, I really dashed through that second half of the middle section on the timeline. Year, it's a year-long timeline, and yeah. Anyways, I also drew up a timeline, which I will show you. Oh, dear. Oh, I can edit this part out. I've got about 30,000 sticky notes <clears throat> on my desk right now, but I drew up a timeline because... And I don't want to show you that too close. I don't want you to actually be able to read it. Not that anybody would stop and take the time to read it. But if you did, I don't want any spoilers on there. But the point being, drawing up a timeline, very helpful. Because, uh, you know, I've never done this before. And, you know, I've got like a year that the characters are doing the thing that they're doing. What's happening and when it's happening and how all of that works and how the various things tie together because as it turns out, really long novels are really complex. And I didn't know that. So drawing up a, a timeline and just trying to map it out in that way is is uh, was really helpful. And I did that like a month ago. So that's been there for a while, but it's nice just having it there. I just keep it on my desk and it's just one of the little things that helps bring structure to this very complex uh, project that I'm working on. As to why things got shorter, um, it wasn't just that I panicked when I realized how long the book was. Now, panic isn't the right word. It was just a, a real sense of shock. But yes, things did indeed get shorter. And that was also because there was a early concept that I had when I was still doing just the world building before I even started writing chapter one. And it's a really cool concept that I want to keep. And I have written it in the books, but there was a scene in a chapter that I imagined, and it was this very cool, intense scene that I got excited about, so I wrote it out even though I was nowhere near. And we were at a point where I've come to realize that that scene is too far ahead in the future. Like, I want that scene to exist in the books, but it doesn't make sense to put it in book one. And I thought that was going to be a central focus for, like, the end of the third quarter of the book, if that makes sense. And I just came to realize, I think this scene is going to be in like book two or three or something. So we're, we're putting a pin in that scene and it is going to happen. You know, the, the dominoes are still being set up for that scene to happen. It's just a much longer chain of dominoes than I was expecting initially when I wrote it, you know, a couple weeks into the process. So because that whole thing and all of the, the stuff that it's going to affect aren't happening until later, book two this book just got shorter. So it went from kind of being like a seven parts, I had like seven major sort of parts planned out to a six parter. And we're averaging around like 50 pages per part. So we took a lot out. And that in addition to the kind of just speeding things up a little bit, and not going too much more in depth with scenery that we've already seen, right? Uh, things are moving along quite a bit more quickly. So I'm expecting the book in terms of Google document pages to go from like maybe the 350 pages I was expecting to maybe 275 to 300. So in terms of like paperback book, we're still looking at like a 600 to 700 page book. So it's still going to be a big old whopper, don't you worry. Um, big old whopper. But maybe we're, you know, cutting things down a little bit more manageable, a little bit more uh, not so much to bite off and chew at one time. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's ultimately just a good thing. And it's what the story wanted to be. It's what the story wanted to do. So it's not like I feel like I'm imposing myself on the story just to make it shorter. 
it's just happening naturally. It feels like the right thing to do. So I'm very happy about that. Also, the extremely minor spoiler alert, there's a killer whale. There's a killer whale with a name that is a character in this book. I had no idea there was going to be a killer whale. You know, it's just one of those weird things, you know, to the few authors out there watching this, they might be laughing and pointing like, yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes characters just show up and you're like, where the hell did that come from? Like there's a killer whale. Like what is this fucking Shamu and SeaWorld? I don't know, but there's a killer whale now and he's really cool and intimidating. And I, I love his role in the story and his character. And, and it's very charming. And I'm, I'm happy he's there. The book wasn't complete without him. And it makes me wonder at all the possibilities of all these characters that are going to pop up and going to come into existence in the future as I continue writing down this path. Writing, not writing, although both would make sense, I suppose. But anyways, yeah, Killer Whale. His name's Fear. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. But, you know, that's what the character wanted to be called, and it makes sense with context. So... Yeah, I think that's everything I have as far as updates with the book without giving away spoilers, even though I did kind of just give you. Anyways, um, there was kind of a funny story that happened recently. Like, this video is probably already long enough, but there was a funny story, and I figured, you know, I try and put some sort of lesson I've learned recently into these videos, and uh, I, I guess, I don't know. I'm just going to tell you, and you can do with it what you will. Um... Spoiler alert, the, the moral of the story is just don't be a cunt. Um, so I'm at Taco Bell sitting in the drive-thru after work. It's, you know, later in the week, like a Thursday or something. You know, you still got work ahead of you, but you're so tired from the week that's already gone by. And I'm exhausted. It was a long day. And I'm just kind of in a grumpy mood. I kind of got up on the wrong side of the bed that day. I do that sometimes. I don't like it, but I certainly do it. And I was just in kind of a foul mood. So I'm sitting in the drive-thru and... Somebody drives up behind me and is just blasting music. Just boom, 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 boom. You know, where you can feel it in your chest. Your entire car is shaking. Everyone inside the restaurant can feel it. Everyone else in the drive-thru. And it's like, bro, turn down your fucking music. Like, how much of a cunt are you? Like, really, how much of a child are you? Like, you do you have no empathy or consideration for other people around you? Like, I can't, I honestly can't grasp how people can be such self-centered cunts sometimes. But anyways, I'm sitting there and I'm in a bad mood. You know, I'm in my work truck. I'm in, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of delicate. I think I come across in my videos a little bit more delicate than I do when I am at work as a tradesman. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to be cute now. I am not trying to be cute when I'm at work. You know what I mean? So I'm a bit more intimidating when I'm, when I'm in my work clothes and in my work truck. And I'm like, man, fuck this. Like, this is not cool. And part of me wants to, you know, get out and start some shit. And I'm like, no, I'm not that guy. That's too immature. Um, but I do, I look in my rearview mirror like, who's causing the problem? And I see this kid. And he's maybe like 20, 21, 22, something like that. Young. And he's hitting like a vape or something and doing like the French exhale and sucking the smoke back in. And he's driving like this black BMW convertible. And I'm just like, oh, he just reeks of douche, right? Of just self-centered, unaware, selfish behavior. And I'm like, fuck this kid, man. Like, this is bullshit. And this has been going on for like a minute and a half. Like, everybody in line is probably just rubbing their temples at this point. So I'm like, no. I roll down my window, I lean out, and I just stare right at him. And I just keep staring at him. <laughs> and after about 60 seconds of this, he looks up and he's like, Oh, like, like who the, who's this weird motherfucker staring at me? And I go, like, turning down the volume knob. Um, and he's just kind of like, uh, and I'm like, good, I got my point across. My social anxiety kicks in as it always does. So I'm like, I want to turn around now. So I sit back in my seat like, nice. I think there's a decent chance that that will get the music turned off. Um, 30 seconds go by, music is still bump bumping away. And I'm like, man, fuck. Like, I really thought that was going to intimidate this kid into realizing that he was being an asshole and, and stop. And I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm not going to go over there. Like, I don't want to get into a fist fight with a 20-year-old in the Taco Bell parking lot. Like, I've got better things to do. I wasn't in that bad of a mood. And then the line shifts. And 
uh, I can now see the car directly behind me. This kid was the car behind the person behind me. And it's this like low rider truck with this tweak out, tweaked out meth head with like a gray handlebar mustache and gray slicked backed hair. And he is just tweaking and slamming his head to the music and just, and uh, I live in a town where there is a real meth problem right now. And I don't mean like a lot of towns have meth problems, but like there is a meth problem in this town. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh, that guy's on meth. Like right now he is actively on meth and probably has been on meth for a long time. And I'm like, I'm not fucking with that guy. You know, like, do I want to? Do I want to punch him in the face and call him an asshole? Sure. But I don't want to get shot or stabbed over it. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> and I just let it go. And then it occurs to me, after seeing that this is the guy who's been blasting the music, I just stared down some poor kid who's just high and is trying to get some Taco Bell. And, uh... Yeah, probably fucked up his high a little bit with my weird ass shit. So the moral of the story, I suppose, is uh, don't be a cunt. Uh, don't be a cunt like me and, and stare at strangers in their cars trying to intimidate them into doing things that you've imagined that they're doing. Pretty good advice, right? And also don't be a cunt and blast music in drive throughs or other, you know, societal situations where other people can hear your music or social situations because nobody wants to hear your music. If you want to listen to really loud music, go drive on the freeway or get headphones or don't be a cunt or listen to music at a reasonable level like a reasonable person. If it's making your ears ring, it's giving you tinnitus and that sucks. And I think that's all I got, guys. It's been a hell of a few weeks since I last spoke with you guys. I'm still having a good time. Don't worry about me, but a lot going on, and it was nice to just kind of get some of these stories off my chest and just catch up with you guys. Also, Elden Ring is out, and I want to play it so badly. Oh, buddy, I'm stoked. But I'm going to finish the first draft because not playing video games is one of the sacrifices I am making to the writing gods to appease them and uh, allow my book victory and success. But once I finish the first draft, I think I'm gonna allow myself a playthrough of Elden Ring. I think that's pretty reasonable and a nice uh, reward that I will genuinely enjoy and look forward to. So that's the plan with Elden Ring. Um, uh, as soon as I stop this video, I'm gonna think of 10 other things I wanted to say, but it's like 20 minutes already. So I love you guys. I love your faces. Thank you so much for watching. Beardheart, I will see you here with another vlog soon. Talking about books and stuff and my life and things and bye.